The Embrave 150 study is the first phase three study to read out of one of these combination strategies of, in this case, a pd one inhibitor, a tezolizumab, with a VEGF-targeted agent, uh, specifically in this case, bevacizumab. Uh, and this phase three study is of significance because it's the first time we have a phase three study that has beaten serafinib. Uh, there's been numerous studies that have aimed at improving survival for patients in the frontline liver cancer space. Uh, all of those have been negative. We did have a positive phase three study with lenvantinib, but that was a non-inferiority endpoint. So now we have a combination that has shown that uh, we have improved survival uh, in, this, in this population. The study was presented at the ESMO Asia 2019 meeting, and this study was a fairly uh, common design for a phase three study in liver cancer. Took patients who had advanced liver cancer defined as Barcelona stage C or Barcelona B, which are intermediate patients who have progressed on local regional treatments. Uh, patients had to be child pu A uh, and performance status uh, zero or one. And also, you know, it was important because we were using bevacizumab that patients had to have an endoscopy within six months of going on study, and if they had varices, those were control. And this study grew out of a larger phase one, two experience that showed that response rates with this combination were in the 30% range, uh, which was very high for liver cancer. And the study uh, was a global study. Uh, the baseline characteristics of the patients were pretty common for a global type of uh, a liver cancer study, uh, very similar to what we've seen in other studies with serafinib. And the study met both its primary endpoints of improving progression-free survival, as well as improving overall survival. Uh, overall survival, the hazard ratio was 0 0.58. Uh, serafinib had a survival of about 13.2 months. And the survival in the treatment arm of atezolizumab and bevacizumab uh, still had not been reached at the time of uh, this analysis. Uh, this uh, study point has a mean, median follow-up of about eight and a half months, uh, and the study met its endpoints at the, interim, the first interim analysis, so the study was stopped. Uh, the study did confirm the data from the phase one, two study in that the response rate in this phase three study was 27%, uh, which again is very high for uh, the liver cancer population. We know that serafinib has improved survival and many of the other drugs approved have improved survival, but without inducing significant durable responses. And what we're seeing here are very durable, deep responses with the combination when they do occur. And finally, we're seeing this translate into a survival benefit. Not only did the study meet its primary endpoints, uh, as well as secondary endpoint of response rate, uh, the combination was very well tolerated. Uh, you know, overall adverse events were very similar compared to uh, serafinib, but if we look at drug-related adverse events, uh, they were actually higher in the control arm, in the serafinib arm, than in the combination arm. Uh, keep in mind this was a selected population, right, child PUA. Uh, these patients had to have an endoscopy and varices uh, controlled before coming on study. Uh, but overall, if we look at patient-reported outcomes that were presented at the ESMO Asia meeting, uh, there was a significant delay in deterioration of uh, patients' quality of life uh, in the combination arm versus serafinib. So I think many of us in the liver cancer space view this as a practice-changing study. Uh, obviously, uh, it has, does not have regulatory approval yet, but the fact that for the first time in more than a decade that we have something that has beaten serafinib, uh, this will be a very good option for patients and uh, we can tell patients now that we have a regimen that is safe and more effective than what we've had in the past.